Hello everybody, welcome back to another amazing episode of Life in Mox. You already know from the title what I'm going to be talking about today. But before I start, I just want to pray for anyone out there that's going through one kind of mental illness, whether it's anxiety, chronic depression, bipolar disorder, you know, whatever it is. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus that your mind is restored. I decree that every spiritual attack on your mind that's causing you to be in a state of constant unrest, that's causing you to not be able to focus, that's causing you to even have suicidal thoughts or whatever intrusive and negative thoughts, I come against it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that this video reaches every single person that might be going through one depression or the other, or going through, you know, um, strong mental issues issues right now I come against you in Jesus mighty name amen so um, today I'm just gonna be sharing you know how to deal with intrusive thoughts or negative thoughts as a believer now something happened to me last week right um, it was such um, I know overwhelming was it last week or two weeks ago I think one of either two weeks ago or last week but it was so overwhelming for me and I remember this day that I lay on the bed and then I just felt so like a spirit of heaviness come upon me and at that moment, I started having extremely intrusive thoughts. You know, it just I just kept hearing like voices that said, oh, you're not good enough. You're not a good wife. You're not a good mom. You can't even take care of yourself, not to talk of your husband and your children and saying all sorts of things. And I, and I began to accept it. And it felt like at that moment, I didn't have control. And I was crying and I was just feeling so bad. You know, and I was having very, very negative, extremely negative, negative thoughts. And I know that I'm not the only one that goes through this. And so I want to be vulnerable and share, you know, some of the things that have helped me, you know, deal with this kind of situations. I remember also back in 2017, this kind of thing happened because I was feeling overwhelmed. I had, you know, issues, different issues that I was dealing with at that time. And I just wanted to kind of relate with people who are going through something similar. For some people, you might have actually even been diagnosed of chronic depression or anxiety, bipolar disorder, like I said, or other kind of mental issues. And I just want to talk about, you know, from a spiritual perspective, um, perspective, because there's also, you know, we have to take responsibility for our minds, right? Just as if your body feels um, you know, any kind of ailments, you go to the doctor, even if you're a believer, you are going to the doctor to ensure that you are taking responsibility. Yes, God heals, but also we, we can't, we would not decide to be nonchalant or we would not decide to have faith, you know, without works per se, or just like live our lives, you know, thinking, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and make words of declaration without taking responsibility for our health and taking care of our bodies, right? Because this is a body that's frail. So the same way goes to the mind, right? People have issues of the mind and i know that sometimes it might almost feel like you know it's not that serious because it's not a physical ailment but i actually dare to say that people that have issues that bother their minds actually have a harder time than people that go through physical issues physical ailments because for physical ailments if i hit my leg for instance or if i have like you know some kind of diagnosis on my body you know they can prescribe medication that can make me feel better over time, right? They can be something that will, you know, relieve the pain. There can be something that will just make the pain go away. But for people that have a constant battle, ailment of the mind, it's, it's, what can you do, right? Like, how can you deal with that? So let's talk about the spiritual perspective. Um, the first thing I want to say is as believers, we must acknowledge that there is a problem. And I don't know, you know, why you know, it's just become a situation where people have become so, you know, like guarded. And I know, I understand that sometimes you feel like, oh, people are going to judge you. People are going to look at you differently. Like, oh, but you say you pray, you speak in tongues, you read the word of God, and you're going through mental health issues, or you're having negative thoughts. Like, look at you. Those people don't know what they're talking about. Because guess what the Bible says? The Bible talks about how we as believers will go through affliction. So that is an affliction that can affect you as a believer. It does not mean that you are not praying, you're not fasting, you're not speaking in tongues. These are things that can affect you. But what do we do about it? Like I said, the first thing is acknowledge that there is a problem. And the reason is because every time we try to push it away, it actually makes it worse. Every try, time we try to be in denial, it's okay. For instance, now let's talk about maybe someone that gets diagnosed with cancer, God forbid, right? And then the person is in denial and they're just like, I don't have it, I don't have it, I don't have it, right? And they keep living their lives. At some point in time, it will get to the point that the cancer spreads so much that there is nothing 
that can be done right now they say oh you know we're just going to take them to hospice or we're going to offer like palliative care just so that they you know they have like an easy transition but guess what if it was caught on time then there could have been something that the doctor would recommend or maybe let's just do surgery or any kind of thing they, they could have done to actually cause the cancer not to spread it's the same way if you realize that you are having constant like a constant battle of the mind do not do not be afraid to acknowledge that there's a problem okay now when you acknowledge that there's a problem the next thing is to ensure that you have the people around you that can help now this goes to say there is nothing wrong with going for therapy there is nothing wrong with getting a counselor there is nothing wrong for people who have like chemical imbalances where like you know it's not because of anything for instance some people they have their babies that changes their hormones and they have postpartum depression and there's nothing they can do about it really right and they need help some people have to be on medication do not be afraid to get help get the help that you need god is the one that provided the knowledge for the people that are trained psychologically to deal with ailments of the mind so don't be afraid to say i need help and go and get the help if you have to be on medication for a while do that if you have to constantly go to therapy do that until you're able to get to the point where you feel like okay now everything is under control the next thing i'm going to talk about is we have to prepare for the day of battle and what do i mean by this it means every day you wake up you must equip yourself with prayer equip yourself equip yourself with the word of god you cannot live your life as though things are just vibes i'm feeling vibes on vibes eh? I'm freak it doesn't work that way as believer the bible talks about ephesians 6 12 to 13 it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood listen right now you're looking at me in the physical realm but guess what the spiritual realm is as real in fact realer than the physical realm it goes on to say we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers against rulers of darkness in the heavenly places meaning that the devil is 247 looking for a way to take you away from who god says you are the devil is constantly working to attack your mind so that you don't fulfill your God-given destiny. Everything he does is to push you further away from God, is to deter your relationship with God, is to cause you to, to be far away from God. So you have to know that the fight that we are fighting is not physical. It is spiritual. And because we are spirits, we must make sure that we are alert. We, our minds are discerning that the devil is fighting, fighting against my mind, fighting against my destiny, fighting against the destiny of my family. And I refuse to accept it. Now, he goes on to say in 13, he says, now put on the full armor of god another version says put on the shield of faith so that you are able to repel the fairy that of the enemy listen the shield of faith is the word of god the word of god is power the word of god is light the word of god is what you need now i'll tell you what happened to me that day right after i finished crying i woke my husband up, my, my, my husband up and i was like hey like hey look at this is what's going on or this is how i'm feeling and everything and he's like oh let's pray and after we prayed he slept and i started speaking in tongues i said the devil will not make a mess of me like that song says i will pray i will pray i will pray oh, i will pray if i don't pray satan will make a mess of me like it's that simple you have to live a prayerful life and when i say prayerful life it's not just praying and miss oh god help me up go to the word of god what does the bible say against the mind it says i cast down every imagination that seeks to exalt itself against the knowledge of god so god has said that i have a sound mind but the devil is coming to tell me that my mind is not well i'm feeling i'm feeling constantly you know agitated my mind is not able to be at peace i'm not able to sleep well i can't relate well i can't get up and go to work i can't be productive but guess what god has said that he comes and he wishes for me to prosper and be in health even as my soul my mind prospers so devil right now i rebuke you over my mind whatever attack you might be planning against me 
whatever thing that you, you might be coining, the Bible says that no weapon formed against me prospered. So the weapon of the enemy against my mind, I rebuke it. I cast down those negative thoughts because God says I am the head. He says I am not beneath. He says I will prosper. He says that I will lend to nations and I will not borrow. He says that I am, I am, I am full of joy, full of the joy of the Holy Ghost, full of the peace of God. My mind is at peace. And that night, literally, I'm telling you guys, I was praying in the Holy Ghost. I was speaking over my mind. And I felt like I woke up the next morning and I felt, oh, you know, thank you. And I felt much better. Now, I'm not going to say that this is, the, the once you do this, for some people, it might not go away. Right? Like I said, you might still need therapy. You might still need to take medications. Well, ensure that you are equipping yourself. Don't give up. Now, the fact that you are fighting constantly as a believer means that there is something great that is ahead of you. Listen. First Corinthians 6 verse 9, right? First Corinthians 6 verse, verse 9. Let me tell you the concept of this uh, concept context of the scripture. So Paul was was going to Ephesus, right? And he said, A great and effectual door has been opened to me, but there are many adversaries. Pretty much he was saying he wanted to go and preach the gospel. And he knew that in Ephesus there was going to be you know, the gospel will be spread and it was a great place that God wanted him to be so that people will come to the knowledge of God. But guess what? There are many adversaries. Now, that that context can be applied to every other area of our lives. A great and effectual door of favor, of blessings, of grace, of, you know, promotions, of marriage, of children have been opened unto us. But guess what? There are many adversaries. And who is the adversary? satan the devil and that's why i said you must equip yourself do not behave like someone who doesn't have control because you do you have control over your destiny as a believer you must stand on that victory and you must ensure that you walk as though you've overcome even if your situation isn't changing keep doing what the word of god says and i promise you you would see complete and total deliverance in jesus name and finally i'm going to say please surround yourself with a, go a, a, a good community of Christians. I don't know why people say, oh, I'm going to watch online. It's good, right? If you're not able to go to church, now, you know, that happens sometimes. Maybe something happens, fine. But you cannot constantly neglect the fellowship of the brethren. Let me tell you why. Because the devil's plan is to isolate you so he can attack. So if you don't have a body of friends or believers or community that you can constantly relate with, you are easily susceptible to the attacks of the enemy. Because imagine like you're constantly lonely, you're going through, you know, serious like anxiety and depression and you can't talk to anybody. You just feel like you're alone. It's worse. But when you have people that you can share with, people that, in fact, sometimes when you go to church, you don't even feel like you want to pray. You don't feel like you want to sing. You don't feel like you want to do anything. You just feel like, God, I, I'm done. Just take me. Take me away from this earth. And you go to church and you just hear someone sing. A song as give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. And your spirit is just lifted because you feel like, oh, maybe that's God talking to me, telling me to give thanks even, you know, at the, even through the situation, through this hard situation, and your spirit is lifted. Or you don't want to pray, you are tired, you are just fed up, and then you can hear somebody behind you saying, Rabako Shata Yabanamada, Eketebada Gadaba Shate, Rab. And then you know those people that really give us the powerful tongues. And before you know it, you catch the fire. And you start speaking in tongues as well. So I'm saying all this jokingly but seriously, like Pastor Aaron will say, to say that you have to ensure that you are you are surrounded by a community. If you feel like the church you are going to is not feeding you, find another place. But do not, never neglect the fellowship of your brethren. The Bible says that they met constantly. They broke bread constantly. That is why the kingdom of God and the gospel of God was able to advance. Because they were constantly together, covering and shielding themselves against the attack of the enemy. I hope that I've been able to encourage you wherever you are. I pray again today that you receive a sound mind. And I pray that you receive the grace to pray and study the word of God and prepare for the day of battle. So that after all you will stand. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. If you stay till the end, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you can get my videos and so you don't miss it, you know, because of the YouTube um, algorithm. I appreciate you. I love you guys always. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.